Hi, this is Aaron and Linda with Traveling Flamingo. There are so many different dining experiences available on Royal Caribbean cruises. We've heard a lot about dining packages, and we decided to give it a try on our last sailing, and would do it very differently next time. We're going to tell you everything you need to know about dining packages so you can decide if it's worth your money and not make the same mistakes we made. All that and more, coming right up. To help you make your decision about the dining package, we've broken our video up into five categories. Main dining room, ship type, types of packages, prices, how it works, and our tips, and where we failed. <laughs> how you feel about the main dining room could impact if you want to get a dining package. On all Royal Caribbean cruises, there's a main dining room which serves breakfast, lunch, and dinner. Every day, this is included in your cruise fare. In our experience, the main dining room has been really good. We've always enjoyed stuff that's been there. They've made substitutions that were a good variety, and the food was, was really good. My favorite was the French onion soup, which they have on lots of ships. I suggest you try it. <laughs> that being said, we do have some friends who do not like the main dining rooms, and they don't like the size and sort of scale of it. They find the qualities not as great and would rather prefer a specialty restaurant. So if you're not a fan of the MDR or the buffet, you may want to look into a dining package, which will let you go to the different specialty restaurants. Before we get into how the ship plays a factor in these types of packages, I just want to pop in here and thank everybody who has liked and subscribed to our channel and say that we have tons of cruising videos, including What's Free on Royal Caribbean, ship tours including the Odyssey of the Seas room tour, and what you need to know for your perfect day at Coco Cay. So when this is, video is done, be sure to check out our channel. Thank you. So on to the class of ship. Each class has its own selection of restaurants that are included and specialty restaurants. Some of the specialty restaurants you'll see across the fleet and others you won't. For example, Chops is one that's available on all the ships, but 150 Central Park is only available on ships with a Central Park. It is important before you decide to purchase a dining package that you check out and see which specialty restaurants are available on your ship and are they ones that you're interested in dining at. The Quantum and Oasis class of ships have the most specialty restaurants on board, so you could try a different one each night. On smaller ships, you might be repeating some specialty restaurants, which would be a deterrent for some people, but others wouldn't mind. I know Aaron would be happy to dine at Giovanni's table every night. <laughs> How can you go wrong with pizza and Italian food every night? I mean, that's exactly what I go on a cruise for. There are a variety of different dining packages and prices to choose from. The prices can vary depending on the sailing, and they do offer discounts, so be sure to check out the prices for your specific sailing, but this will give you a general idea. The top of the line option is the unlimited dining package, which costs around 190 US per person. Here you can dine at a new specialty restaurant every night, and you can order a multiple entrees if you want. If you have a favorite specialty restaurant and it's available, you can eat there every single night. On sea days, you also get a lunch as a specialty restaurant. You never have to go to the main dining room for your whole cruise. There's also a three night dining package, which costs around $110 US per person, which as it sounds, you can dine at a specialty restaurant on three of the evenings. Your sailing may also offer chops plus one at $85 per person. Our sailing also offered the Royal Lunch at $35 per person. This is an interesting new experience where you can have one course of your meal from a different specialty restaurant, so you get to try a bunch of different restaurants at one time. This was offered on our last sea day. It didn't make sense for us as we had already tried a bunch of the restaurants on board. I also did not love that it was a prefixed menu. So how much would the specialty restaurants cost you if you wanted to go there without a package? Again, these can vary depending on the ship and sailing, but they range from $30 to $50 per person. Some of the more expensive ones are 150 Central Park, Chops Grill, and Wonderland. If you're interested in dining at some of these cheaper restaurants like Samba uh, for $30, Sabre for $25, and Giovanni table, Giovanni's Table at $35, then you might not be saving anything as that would be in total $90. Also, some of the restaurants are a la carte, and if you choose one of these restaurants, then you can purchase up to from 20 to $35 worth of food. That's actually a lot of food when at Playmakers, the chicken fingers and fries were only $4. So you'll have a lot of chicken tendies. So what's the deal for kids? Children until they are five are free. Kids who are six to 12, you pay as you go. 
and that's only about $10.99 per child and you have to order from the kids menu. Another deal that comes with the dining package is discounts on wine. When dining at specialty restaurants, you can get 40% off bottles of wine that are under $100 and 20% off bottles above $100. So how does it work and what we wish we'd known before our sailing? When you book your package, you get to make one dining reservation for the first or second night of your cruise. And then when you're on board, you can book the rest of your dining. We had an issue booking ours as for the first or second night dining option. We didn't have a restaurant linked to it. And when we called, they weren't able to change or link a restaurant to it. I really wanted to dine at Wonderland. I'd seen and heard so many wonderful things, and I was worried that if we waited till we got on the ship to book it, then we were going to miss out. And I heard it was super popular. This was also the most expensive restaurant that we were planning on dining at on this cruise, and I was so worried we just booked it separately so we knew we would have it. So we were going to have Wonderland plus three nights on a dining package. When we get on the ship, we went to book on the app, but it looked like it was going to charge us, and we didn't want to be charged extra because we already had the dining package, so we got in line for some help. Apparently, you can still book from the app and it will look like they're going to charge you, but because you have the dining package, you'll get the money back. So that was the step we were missing that you could have just done it on the app. Also, another option is that you can go right to the specialty restaurant you want to dine at. So we ended up with the three restaurants and Wonderland. And the other three restaurants we had were Giovanni's Table, Izumi, and Tapanyaki. And those ended up not being really as expensive and we could have just played a la carte at Izumi. So really I wish that we'd known earlier if we could have booked Wonderland for the first night or knowing that we would have had a better chance of getting it. I just felt like there was a lot of information I was missing and I didn't know how to book it and I just didn't want to miss out on my favorite restaurants. This is all based on our conversation as well with the team on board. Uh, if you have uh, you know, comments or if you've gone through this process with dining packages, let us know what your experience was in the comments below. We'd love to hear uh, and make sure that uh, we have consensus on how to do this. It's important to note that some restaurants and experiences are not included in the dining package. This includes the chef's table, wine pairing dinners, and the mystery dinner theater. Also, if you choose Izumi or Tepanyaki, there's a $10 surcharge. If you book the chops plus one, you'll still need to use your CHOPS reservation on the first or second night of the cruise, and then book your second once you get on board. You'll want to book your dining as soon as you can get on board, especially if you have restaurants that you really want to dine at. You can either do it on the app or go right to the specialty restaurant. If you're interested in the dining packages, they do sell out, so keep that in mind. This is a great way for the cruise lines to fill up their reservation. I like the idea of the Unlimited, especially on some of the larger ships with so many different options to try. We hope that you liked our video about Royal Caribbean's dining packages and have learned from our mistake. Have you booked a dining package before? Did you like how you got the reservations? Did you get all the ones you want? Let us know in the comments below. Thanks so much for watching. If you're interested in more of our content, check out our Flamingos and Wonderland channel and our merch. The links will be in the comments below. Thanks again for watching and happy travels. Oh,